So today I want to talk about responsibility. Um, sometimes that's a heavy word. Um, so I've just been reflecting on it since I've been holding more responsibility the longer I stay at the Abbey. So I want to talk about why it can seem to be a burden and also how I'm trying to lighten up. So I've been asking myself some questions. The first is, does responsibility mean that I control everything and everyone? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> when I was in high school, I was in a chemistry class, and I was, I don't know, you could say I was in charge of a group, and we were doing this experiment, and people kept talking and chatting and getting off task. And so I said something, I don't remember what I said, but the result of it was that the teacher, Mr. McHenry, took me into his office and said, you get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. <laughs> I thought, oh, okay, I'm not being very skillful. So then a few years later, I was in a singing lesson and my vocal coach um, was, you know, listening to me and watching my technique and I was trying to strain to hit a high note and my veins were bulging out of my neck. I was stretching up into the air and he said, you're a control freak, right? <laughs> I guess so. So clearly, um, yeah, I was thinking responsibility meant control. Then I thought responsibility means that I do everything myself. So I am now the setup manager at the Abbey. And at first I found myself um, not asking for what needed to be done and not asking for help and instead just doing everything myself. So I wouldn't want to disrupt people so I would you know, let everyone leave, and then I would clean up the setup myself. So that doesn't work either. Or I thought maybe responsibility means that I just dictate to everyone else. I tell everyone else what to do, but I don't do anything myself. So I thought, is responsibility a burden, or is it an opportunity to grow? Does it feel heavy, or does it feel light? So it feels very heavy <laughs> to many people. Um, and I'm not alone in this. I looked up the definition of responsibility and there's quite a number of definitions. One is state of having a duty to deal with something, state of being accountable or to blame for something, opportunity to act independent without author authorization, a thing that one is required to do, something one must do because of a prior agreement, or a moral obligation to behave correctly. So these are all really heavy. <laughs> so I was thinking about what makes responsibility heavy. One is that when you're responsible, like you're the lead for the medicine meal dishes, people blame you when a counter is not wiped. Another reason why it's heavy is that I think I'm the only factor for the outcome. I'm the only one, yeah, that's responsible. Or I think, like I said before, that I can control people. I think I have to be perfect and that the task has to be done perfectly. And I think it has to be done now. I can't wait, I can't reprioritize different things I'm doing. So then I thought, okay, what would it mean for responsibility to feel light? And this image came in my mind of a bundle of balloons. So this is a far cry from the heavy sack of responsibility that I have felt. And I thought, okay, how can I make responsibility feel light? 
Well, there's many ways to do that. One is thought training teachings that we've heard, that we continue to hear. Um, and so since my hero is Shantideva, I will quote three verses, all to do with blame. So chapter 3, verse 17, all those who slight me to my face or do to me some other harm, even if they blame or slander me, may they attain the fortune of enlightenment. Okay, so blame is not a problem. We can just take blame and we can wish others well. Chapter 8, verse 21, why should I be pleased when others praise me? Others there will be who scorn and criticize. And why despondent when I'm blamed, since there'll be others who think well of me? So clearly people have different opinions. We see this often. Um, in chapter 8, verse 162, when others are at fault, I'll take and turn the blame upon myself, and all my faults, however slight, declare and make them known to many. So we can actually voluntarily choose to take blame. And really what we're doing, we're taking what others don't want. And we can give it to our self-centered thought. So I've been thinking, the more I can let go, the more I can hold. The more I can let go of attachment to reputation, the more I can let go of unrealistic expectations the more responsibility I can hold. And we have these three motivations that we begin every day with. And I was thinking about those in terms of responsibility. So when we refrain from harm, we take responsibility for our own welfare in the present and into the future. When we benefit others, we take responsibility to care for others. And when we generate bodhicitta, we take the responsibility to lead all beings to awakening. So then I found one helpful definition out of many not so helpful ones. And that is, worthiness as the recipient of another's trust or confidence. So this is what bodhisattvas do. This is what we're aiming to do, is to be the recipient of another's trust and confidence. And that is not at all a burden. It's not something heavy that we lug around, like this huge sack that we can't bear to take another, um, another stone. It's actually a source of benefit and happiness for ourselves and all beings. And so let's really take responsibility for the way we act, the way we speak, how we think, knowing that by doing this, we will be of benefit to not only ourselves, but to all beings.